barbarian. The barbarian. Act three. All right, what's up guys? I'm Barbarian the Barbarian. This is my hell mode playthrough of Diablo 2, Lord of Destruction. And I'm level 79. Here's my gear swipe. Ba da ba da ba da 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 I think I want to take it easy today. I am absolutely beat. I had a heck of a week. Oh, here's Emilio's gear. So, let's start off with some story mode. Mischief. Say words at me. Being a barbarian, I'm sure you've seen many strange sights in the Northlands. But by all that's still holy, I wish I'd never return to this accursed place. This fetid jungle can't be the fair Kurost I left behind. I don't know what all this evil is, my friend, but it's obvious that you must stop it. I only pray that you can before the jungle consumes the last vestiges of my beloved homeland. If this evil isn't contained, it could spread north to your homeland too. Then the whole world would fall under the shadow of the three. I shouldn't have boasted so much about Kurost on the journey here. Oh, much has changed since I left. You big boaster. You're always boasting on the boat. You're a boat boaster. Ormus, your turn. Ashira is both proud and self-conscious of her womanhood. What? She wants to be a man? She's got penis envy? That was kind of my vibe. My impression of her. Based on my vague memory of her. Self-conscious of her womanhood? She's uh, the mercenary captain, right? She's barely dressed. Alright, what's she got to say? Hello there. You must be a great adventurer to risk coming here. My name's Ashira, and I lead the mercenary band of mages known as the Iron Wolves. We've been hunting down demons in the jungle for months, but no matter how many of them we kill, they just keep coming. It seems this whole place has been overrun by evil. Rumor has it that you've come here to help. If that's true, then I'll let you hire some of my mercenaries. But be careful. If you piss them off, they can be worse than those monsters out in the jungle. No one comes to Karost anymore without good reason. You must be seeking fame and fortune. Wow. She's just gonna gossip at me right to my face. Gossip about me right to my face! You guys got it good over here. You can just fish out the back door. Okay, this is her boyfriend. I mean, uh, employee. And let's go talk to Alcor. Hey, there's just a dude standing here. Uh huh. Damn it! I wish you people would just leave me alone. I... Oh, you're new here, aren't you? I am Alcor the Alchemist. I dabble in potions and salves, and I can sell you some if you really need them. But don't make a habit of coming here. I don't like to be disturbed while I'm studying. You came here with Meshif? That old tour guide to the stupid? I'm surprised you made it here in one piece. <laughs> oh, he's so funny. <laughs> tour guide to the stupid. That's funny. So this is Mashif's hometown. Apparently. Huh. Good day. Have you met Natalia? She appears to be a member of the Krau Harshek, 
A secret order that has been around for centuries. Almost as long as the Herodrum itself. Her presence here makes me uneasy, for they are traditionally sworn to hunt down Magi who have betrayed the trust of their order. I wonder why she is here. That is the coolest order! The, the Rawl Hazek or whatever. So they're, all they do is they hunt down magi who have betrayed the trust of their order. So they're like the fact checkers. Huh. Let's, 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 let's give them a better name. They're like, uh, they keep people accountable. That's what it is. They keep the wisest, most powerful people accountable to their traditions. That's their role in society. Huh. Huh. And it's like maximum accountability. They, we're literally gonna hunt you down. And either apprehend you and deliver you to your superiors or kill you. It's kind of un unclear, it's left vague. Okay. And so, <laughs> huh, that, that's kind of what happened in the Herodrum, wasn't it? I think they said some of that in Act 2. Alright, and Herodley, he is here actually. Let's talk to him. Yes? Welcome to Karas, Traveler. Few come willingly to this ancient... Ashira leads them. Oh, I already talked to him. He was actually greeted me out of the door. And then I just had to reload the map to get him over there. Okay. That does seem familiar. Alright, that's everybody. That's all the talking there is. Such a cool town. And here's Diablo, the Dark Wanderer. He's like a big follower. Disappear. Fight my demons. These were in the cinematic. I knew it was Diablo. The stashes are so slow here. <sighs> See, they run back. They get you killed by making you aggro everything. Baskets! I will say, the urns in Act 2 were the most satisfying container to break open. They just chatter so good. Wrathbender. A strange little statue. A strange little statue. Ask Kane about the jade figurine. I don't say it like that. Ask Kane about the jade figurine. I scared you for a minute, didn't I? Cloud Stalker. Ah. It's 
like a dragonfly thing. Alright, Kane, what do you say? Back in Lutgolain, Meshif told me he had a fondness for jade figurines. On his trading voyages, he collected an odd assortment of such small statues. I would show him your figurine. Oh yeah, we gotta play telephone with this thing. Let's see. It's just a little man. My mossy jade idol. Praise you. That jade figurine will complete the set I was collecting. Here. I've had the statuette of a golden bird for years, but I consider it a fair exchange. The golden bird. So what, he had two of these, I guess? But don't you know you could get a permanent life boost with this? I've read legends about a sage named Kuile, who studied the mysteries of life beyond death. If I remember correctly, his ashes were ensconced within a golden statuette. It was a very strange tale. Maybe it's this one. So he wanted the jade. He paid gold for jade. He ripped himself off. And now, I give it to Alcor, the alchemist. Good day. Ah, the golden bird of Guile. Thank you, my friend. Busy yourself while I experiment with the ashes within it. Then return and see what I've made for you. From the ashes of Quile, I have mixed for you a portion. Wait a minute. I saw this on an episode of South Park. You put ashes in my chocolate milk. 20 to life, so it's 786. That checks out. The math checks out. All right. I love these little conga drums. That sounds good. <sighs> hmm, let me think. What game have I been thinking about lately that I wanted to talk about? I mean, besides Diablo. I think it was Minecraft. Yeah, I played Minecraft. Quite a long time. I can't carry anymore. It's awesome. I think Minecraft is easily the most interesting phenomenon in gaming in living memory which is kind of the same thing as saying in gaming <laughs> phase blade very fast attack speed 
Four sockets. Huh. Isn't there a crystal sword better than Phase Blade? I think this is the second item class, not the third. Required level 54 makes me think it's the second. But maybe I'm wrong. Let's see. The um, lightsaber is a phase blade, isn't it? So, I might be wrong. Alright, let's go sell some things. Never forget that your ultimate purpose here in Kurast is to destroy Mephisto. The ancient Horodrim imprisoned the Lord of Hatred inside the Guardian Tower that is located within the temple city of Travancall. Know this, friend. The only way to gain entry to Mephisto's prison is to destroy the artifact known as the Compelling Orb. Mephisto used this device to control the Zakarum priests and their followers. The orb can only be destroyed with an ancient flail imbued with the spirit of the one incorruptible priest. Soon after his imprisonment, Mephisto worked his evil corruption on the Zakarum priesthood. All were turned to his dark ways, save one. Kalim, the K. Hagen of the High Council. Mephisto directed the other council priests to slay and dismember Kalim, and then scatter his remains across the kingdom. The priest Sankakur succeeded Kalim as K. Hagen, eventually becoming the embodiment of Mephisto here on the mortal plane. The corrupted High Council fashioned an orb to control the rest of the Zakarum faithful and used their powers to hide the lair of their master from mortals. Your task is to collect the scattered relics of Kalim, his heart, his brain, and his eye. Then, using the Horodric Cube, transmute Kalim's flail with his relics. Once this is accomplished, you must destroy the compelling orb with Kalim's will to open the way into the corrupt sanctum of Mephisto. Okay, that might be the single coolest story in Diablo 2. What the frick? I never even paid attention to that. So, Kalim was the uh, the one incorruptible priest and so that's why Mephisto had to uh, have him killed and dismembered chopped into pieces and then his remains spread across the, the continent or whatever the land So even his his remains, even after he was killed, his remains were a threat to Mephisto. Otherwise, why do that, right? Why go to all the trouble? Why not just burn them or something? Yeah, it suggests even that burning them was, um, at least according to Mephisto, less threatening to Mephisto than scattering them. Anyway, I can probably get rid of this. It's 40, 40 resist total. It's a 71 resist total. This is the better one. It's got 10 MF too. 20 run walk, same run walk, half freeze duration. I do like that. Uh, just the defense kind of sucks, but. I'm kind of tired of holding on to these. But man, the all resists are good. It's fine, it's fine. Phase Blade. Yeah. 
All right, let me go look up four socket rune words for swords before I throw this away. Let me be diligent here. Yeah, so I could make a passion or a hand of justice. Passion does not seem like it'll be better or much better than the swords I have now. So I'm mostly interested in Hand of Justice. And Phase Blade is the the elite version of this sword. So the highest um, item class. So that's a good one. And as an added bonus with all crystal sword type of swords, it's indestructible. There's no durability to worry about. That means no repairing. Very cool. However, I don't know if that changes how its damage is budgeted. Like if it does less damage because it's budgeted for um, um, indestructibility, I would probably rather just use one that needs to be repaired and does more damage. But this is a cool thing to hold on to. And I probably should hold on to it. Oh my god. Huh. I guess I'll put it in here. I really don't want to accidentally socket it though. But I'm liable to if it's in there. Because that, that stuff gets moved around a lot. But I'm also liable to if it's in here. <laughs> It'll go in there for now. It's fine. But yeah, the runes I need to make Hand of Justice are ridiculous. It's like Sir Cham Am Lo. And I don't even have an Am anymore. I just used my last Am on this Jin Slayer here. And Sir and Cham are our high runes. Lo is like almost a high rune or something. But yeah, that one would be awesome. It does all kinds of cool fire stuff. Blaze, Meteor, um, Holy Fire Aura, and even um, like Freeze's target or something. That would be so cool. And it gets up to like, I think 330% enhanced damage. So that's insane. It'll almost certainly beat this, right? Because it's like, What's 300% of 35? That's uh, 90, 105 physical damage. Yeah, that's on a max. I mean, 93 minimum. So the minimum would be better. The maximum will be worse. Um, but the enhanced damage percentage, well, let me see. Hmm. I don't honestly know if that would be better than the Jin Slayer. But probably, after you count for all the meteors and, and whatnot. Anyway, that's a dream, it'll never happen, but I'm gonna hold on to it anyway. You never know what you'll find. And, uh... Yeah, back to the game. Let's go. Vidala's Fetlock. So Kalim was a really good guy. He was a good guy. All these years, I thought he was a bad guy. Just because gathering his body parts was gross. And gross is bad. <laughs> I literally gave it no thought. 
didn't listen to any of the story unless it was a cinematic so let's see it's his heart his brain his flail Wasn't there one more piece? Heart and brain. See, I can, I can cross some things up. It wasn't a lung. It wasn't a foot. It wasn't a hand. It wasn't his tongue. Maybe it was just his heart and brain. I don't remember. Man, I want to pay attention to this Kalim storyline to see if there's any hint at what it was about him that made him incorruptible to Mephisto. Because I want to know the answer to that. I mean, all the other priests were, were corrupted. And then Mephisto turned them against him. So there had to be something special about him. Do -do 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 -do. Yeah, so in um, gaming culture, there's always been this like ongoing debate about how much do the graphics matter? Because the graphics are always getting better. And um, it seems to me that the debate is pretty much settled at this stage. It's like the the rest of the the answer to it is something like, yeah, graphics matter, but they don't matter as much as everybody thought they did. <laughs> like they want the game to look good. To look nice aesthetically and this kind of the they don't necessarily want it to look hyper realistic or lifelike even like this art style is not lifelike but it's good got a cool style to it. It's consistent about its style. Because inconsistent style will ruin again. Antlers! Skills. And Minecraft's graphics are like everything's made of squares. Big fat giant squares. The pixels, the things, the whole world. <laughs> even your head. It's not even round, it's a square. And it didn't matter. That game took over the world. Even your grandma was playing it.
Man, I wish I would stop finding yellows. Good to see you. Greetings. Maybe it's time to stop picking them up unless they're relevant to me. Plus one to war cries. Nope. Hello. That's a two-hander. I need it to be a one-hander. Yeah, my experience with Minecraft was that, like, the boys kind of go off and do their own thing, and the girls kind of go off and do their own thing. Like, they play the game very differently. <laughs> and within those, there are other divisions that are interesting. Like, within the group of um, boys. There's a split between um, boys who want to build machines that, that do things and make things and boys that want to make art. They want to build beautiful castles and towers and whatever, right? Statues. And I was the artistic kind. My friend was the um, the machine building kind, so it was actually perfect. It was like the perfect pairing because between us, we had it all covered. <laughs> He'd make the machines that would make the the blocks that I need to make to build beautiful things, and the supplies and all that, and I could basically just ignore that part of the game. Like, I could just play it up to the Iron Age or whatever, where I have all iron stuff. And then, um, just kind of chill there and start start building beautiful things that are useless. Um, while he continues on building machines and systems and all that that I can use to get uh, just fully diamond gear, basically, for free. Without having to do anything. And an unlimited supply of blocks to build with. Now, that's a little bit of an exaggeration, because I still had to mine. Lots of mining. So I wasn't actually just all free and I still helped with some of the machine building and all that and he still helped with some of the, the artistic building and all that but for the most part that was the split We played um, modded somewhat too. But we kind of dialed it back a little. Like, we didn't want to do absurd mods. We wanted a kind of balanced mods where it was like you could, you could get a mod. that when you cut the bottom of a tree, it brings down the whole tree. Um, 
as if uh, as if you had just broken one piece of wood. Or you could get one that does the same thing, um, but the durability on your axe is going to be taken away proportionate to how many wood blocks fell. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, that's going to break completely break your axe after one tree. One like, uh, what was it? I can't carry anymore. The super tall dark wood trees. Made of uh, two by two blocks. So that's the one we did. I liked exploring in that game too. Like eventually if you play it long enough, there's nothing really new to see. It's just all in different shapes. The land is shaped differently. The villages are laid out differently. The oceans are a little different shaped. But even then, what I started doing was um, building beautiful structures across the whole world. Like I would land some new place, land in some new land, and then build something awesome there. <laughs> and then sail on, or travel on to the next uh, beautiful land. Do the same thing. It was awesome. I was like Christopher Columbus. Um, this looks like a place I need to go. Let's see. The biggest, most impressive thing I ever built on Minecraft. Okay. This is easy. It was a... What was it? A Colosseum, like a Roman Colosseum, I think. Giant Colosseum made out of sandstone in the desert. Right by the ocean. Now, I never totally finished it, but I did almost finish it. It was hundreds of blocks wide. And I spent over hundreds of hours um, farming the sand and turning it into sandstone. And then building it. And I probably still got pictures of it somewhere. It was cool. But sadly, that server um, shut down before I finished it. And I was building it in secret. Like nobody knew it existed. It was out in the middle of nowhere. In the desert. And my plan was, when I'd finally finish it, I'm gonna tell everybody and they can, I'm gonna like gift it to the surfer owner so he can use it as like a dueling arena or something. I am overburdened. A kite shield, I'm pretty sure that's a uh, middle of Bregas. It's not very good. Yes. But let's find out for shower. Good evening. Get rid of useless charms. I don't know why I kept those. Steel Clash. That's what I meant by Milabregas. I'm a dumbass. 
Fifteen null resists. Yep, it's a good paladin shield to start. But we are well past that stage of the game. Yes. Yes. Cool. Aren't you wearing a chainmail? I guess I ought to look at it at least. Yep. Poison spinner. Eventually joining a Minecraft server got a little weird. Well, most of them were probably fine. Maybe it was just the one that I tried to join. But it was a group of, like, tight friends. Ooh. Rune Sword. And they were like highly selective about who they would in invite to their server. So you had to like put in an application and then go through an interview process with the owner. Where he would ask you these weird questions and then like say judgmental things about you. <laughs> like I had already decided I did not care. Like by the time there was a point in the process where I was like, okay. I don't care what these idiots think <laughs> anymore. Um, this has gotten so ridiculous. But I'm going to stick it through for the entertainment. I'm going to see how ridiculous this gets. Because this is hilarious. Something about the internet deranges community leaders all across the internet. Um, to forget that they're kids. Most of them are kids. Like Reddit mods, Discord mods, all these admins and shit. Almost all of them are volunteer positions that uh, young people volunteer for so that they can feel powerful for the first time in their life. <laughs> and everybody kind of knows this is the situation, but um, it's, free, it's basically free labor for the company, so... They embrace it and raise it up. That's the right way to do things. I'm sure there are some mature, like, 18 to 20 year olds, but not many. Just not many. Ouch. Stay a while and listen. Maybe there used to be once upon a time. But our society these days kind of coddles people to stay children. Like all the way to like 30, sometimes even 40. As long as possible, it seems like. Let's see, I did not... Oh my gosh. I didn't portal. We have to walk back, buddy. That's what I get. Distracting myself.
But Minecraft was a great experience, though. I learned all kinds of cool stuff on there. And it was mostly social type of stuff, which is kind of right up my alley. Like, um... Like property rights and stuff. Where everybody kind of wants to build their house in the same area. But everybody also kind of knows, don't build your house too close to someone else's house. Or they're not going to like it. <laughs> and also don't go into their house and take things. And maybe don't even go into their house without asking. And all this stuff. And, um... Unless it's one of those like highly modded servers that are highly modded for it um, with security features and stuff. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. Stopping anyone from doing that. Just walking into your neighbor's home, destroying things or taking his stuff or whatever. So you actually had to trust people not to do that, the people you're playing with. Which was interesting. It's pretty cool. Well, for one reason, because you need to learn that you can trust people. Sometimes there's a temptation to turtle up and not trust anybody with anything. But by doing that, you never learn if you can trust people. I can't carry anymore. His eye! That was his other body part. Thanks! Here, let's portal before I forget. Let's go back to town. Good to see you. Man, those rejuves went quick, didn't they? Man's down here. There's a little purple on my black sword. As I told you before, I placed an enchantment upon the dark side in order to keep the demons at bay. But lately, the enchantment seems to be weakening. If memory serves me correctly, there is a holy Skatsimi blade that could revitalize the enchantment. The blade is called the Gidbin. Find it. And our sanctuary here will remain safe. Alright, so the Gidbin is to protect the city. Huh. Good day. Little dagger. Do blood sacrifice on yourself. Yeah, so this theme of uh, you occupy the last sanctuary of good in the world is definitely echoed here in Act 3. With these, like, inscriptions on the ground create, like, a protective bubble around the city. Huh.
his mind, his heart, and his eye. And his flail. That's so cool. I like to think that these body parts are symbolic of what it was that made him the incorruptible priest. The one incorruptible priest amongst all the priests. Like, his, his mind, his heart, and his uh, ability to see, to sight, or pay attention, you might say, were all in alignment. But he was the only one. <gasps> a jaw rune! That's a big dick rune. It's one of the big boys. I am overburdened. Search for the brain. Brains. If you listen closely, the zombies actually say that. They say, brains. <laughs> I guess that's the tastiest part of a human. Cracking open an egg. Hmm. Silver edged axe. Hey, that's a lot of damage, but it's two handed, so it's not really a lot. That's so sick, though, I found a jaw rune. White Deckard. I want to put it away. I know Jaw Ith Burr is a rune word. I think it's an enigma, maybe? I don't know. Alright, let's sell stuff. Or let's talk to the dude. Ah, Kalim's eye. Only it can reveal the true path to Mephisto. Place the eye in the Herodric cube along with Kalim's other relics. The heart, the brain, and the flail. Since you haven't come across the Gidbin yet, the dagger must be deeper in the jungle nearer Kurast. Greetings. If we are to have peace from the shadow, you must find the weapon which will destroy the light. Oh. So the Gibbon is the weapon that destroys the light. And that's what they're using to destroy the protective enchantment of the city. So we have to take it from them. And if I understand right, maybe use it to restore the protective enchantment of the city. Huh. All right. Well, how long have I been playing? I don't know. I'm gonna I wanna talk to some people and then I'm gonna I think I'm gonna call it for the moment. Good evening. Legend has it that the Skatsimi priests place great power within the small blade. Power enough to repel this terrible jungle curse which encroaches on our sanctuary. You came here with Meshif? Okay, okay. What about Ashira? Good evening. I'm certain that the Gidbin is very closely guarded. I want to try her mercenaries so bad. My very next character 
I don't even know what class it is, but what I am certain about is that he's going to have an Act 3 mercenary. <laughs> You'd best get back out there and find that blade. The jungle creeps further into this camp by the hour. Greetings. Once the Gidman is found, Ormus will use it to strengthen the protected barrier around the dark side. Cool, cool. All right. I'm gonna take a break. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.